Okay, in this segment, I will attempt to find the hydrostatic force on this particular quarter circle, okay? And the width into the screen is one meter as well. Now, the different thing over here is I have two immiscible fluids, okay? One is ethyl alcohol, which is a specific weight given to you, and the second one is water, and they do not mix. That's what immiscible means. There's a clear interface between the first and the second liquid. So what we are going to learn in this segment is how do we approach these type of problems. Okay, let's go ahead and draw our forces. So I do know that it will be like this, F, FR or FP force that will be generated, right? And that will be, it will have components. It will have components in the Y direction and it will have components in the Z direction as well, okay? So now, if I go out and write this, my FP will be FY in the J direction minus FZ in the K direction. So the existence of two immiscible fluids doesn't change this fact. Obviously, the numbers that we are going to obtain here and here will be affected by the existing of a two fluids in my case. I will first start with the FY component, the horizontal component. Okay, so... We need to be careful in here because there is a change of fluid. So what I'm going to do in here is let me attempt to draw the same thing. So it's two meters going down and then we move into the another fluid. And this is the second one. And then, okay, this is the area. Remember, I'm looking at the projected area over here. I'm not looking at this. Okay, so I'm looking at this projected. And the height is one meter and the width is into the screen is one meter as well. So this is like a rectangle. Okay. All right. So let's be careful over here. So this is two meters, this is one meter, this is one meter. And here's what the question says. Over here is the interface that I have. There's a specific weight one over here. There's a specific weight two over there. This is a free surface. And let's assume that PG is equal to zero over here, right? It's a free surface. Now I'm going to start like this, okay? So till I reach this point, you do notice something. The existence of whatever in here has absolutely nothing to do with pressure distribution is in the fluid number one. However, the reverse cannot be said. So the fluid two pressure distribution will be affected by the existence of another fluid that I have over here. And if you remember what we discussed, what will be the slope of this line? This will be the specific weight one, which is 7.74 kilonewton per meter cube, okay? So now the question is, what is gonna happen when I move into the second fluid? The answer is this. Now, at this point, I will have the slope that I have here will be specific weight 2. Okay, okay. so let's continue like that. Actually, let's go ahead and delete this. Um, so now you can see here, this is how it's going to look like. Okay, so this will be the pressure distribution on this particular plate. Let's go ahead and rewrite this specific weight 2 over here as well. And the question is, what is going to be my force the, the one force, I'm not interested in the distributed force, let's convert to one free force. Okay, after establishing this, the rest is not that difficult in my personal opinion. So I'm going to call this point A, and what I'm going to do is, let's call this point B, let's call this point C, is right in the middle, at the geometric center of it, okay? But at the end of the day, I, as I'm using pressure prism over here, what I will obtain is, I will obtain my pressure at PC, and then multiply by this area, okay? So my goal is to obtain my PC value, okay? So let's start with PA. So here's what how PA is going to look. PA will be specific weight 1 times how much distance that I travel from here to here, okay? So there's nothing new over here. And specific weight 1 was given to me as 7,740 newton per meter cube. So if I do that, so then if I multiply this by 2, I will get 0, uh, 8, 415, right? 15,480 pascals. So this will be my pressure at A. Let's go to find pressure B. Actually, I don't really need to find pressure B. So I will go out and find pressure at C, okay? But because that's what I need, okay? Alternatively, what you can do is you can calculate PB. You can calculate, you can do this. You can get PB, you can get PD, and average them out but you can see that will be PC, okay? So I'm just taking a direct shortcut over here. In the previous segment, I explained this in more detail, okay? 
So then this will be this value, 15,480, right? Plus, now the slope is going to be whatever the specific weight of second one is. And this is water, so it's going to be 9,800. And the distance that I do, I do go down here to here is, so centroid will be right at the center of it. It's 0 0.5. There's a 1 over here, so that will be 1.5. So now I need to put this point this into my calculator and I will get myself 30,180 pascals. Okay? Okay. As I know my PC, now my FY will be PC times area. Okay? Um, PC is what I just find over there, uh, 30,180. And the area itself is, again, let's be careful in here. I also reminded you in the previous segment. This will be the height over here. It's not nothing to do with the pi r square or 2 pi r divided by 4. Okay, it's not the surface area. So then I will write here the height is 1 and going into the page is 1. And you can clearly see from here is, therefore, my Fy turns out to be 30,180 newtons. Or I can simply call this Fy is equal to 30.2 kilo newtons, right? So that's my answer for the first half of the question. Okay, I have a question to you. Can I simply say that, you know what, this kind of looks like a 45 degree because this is kind of symmetric. Can I say Fy is equal to Fc? I mean, obviously you can say it, but it will be wrong. I never said anything related to that. I only made that comment about a inclined plate. If I have something like this, then yeah, this angle is theta. Then you can relate Fy and Fz by using theta. But this doesn't apply to in here, okay? This is not like it is kind of symmetric. It is not. And I will demonstrate you by obtaining the answer in the FZ direction, okay? For the FZ component, what we will do is we will calculate the volume of the fluid above it. So let's do this. It's two meters over here, one more meter, and then it's like this and go up like that. Now the tricky part over here is Let's do an interface over here. First fluid that I have. This is the second fluid that I have. Write some numbers. This is one meter. This is two meter. This is one meter. And over here is one meter as well. And into the page is one. Okay. So the FC is going to be the weight of this shape. So now this looks a little bit complicated, but we'll manage. We'll, we'll survive through this. There's not only one way to solve it, but I will show you one way of solving this uh, volume calculation over here. Um, so this will be, I'm going to sum this, I'm going to add a summation sign over here, then I'm going to add this whole thing over here like this, okay? So now, and this is, be careful about it, this is the second fluid that I have, then I'm going to subtract this area. So that's going to be, the inside of it's going to be green, or is it going to be purple, specifically to well, it's going to be specific way too, right? Well, logically think about it. What I'm trying to achieve over here is to obtain basically this, right? If I put over here this whole, you, you note here, as this is purple, I will subtract purple over here as well. Go ahead and convert this, okay? So FC will be equal to, let's call this one, let's call this two, let's call this three. So that's going to be the specific weight one times volume one plus specific weight 2 times volume 2 minus specific weight 2 times volume 3. Okay, let's go ahead and insert the numbers in. So this is going to be 7740. This will be 9800. This will be 9800 as well because I'm just looking at the color-coded specific weights. What will be the volume 1? So that will be the wet is 1 the height is 2, into the page or screen is 1. What about volume 2? It's the same, right? 1 is high, one is wet, 2 is height, 1 into the screen. How about volume 3? That will be a little bit different now. It's going to be pi, r square, r is 1, divided by 4, right? The area of the entire circle is pi r square, and then this is going to be pi r square over 4, and then into the page or into the screen is 1. So now let's try to make this a little bit better. So I'm going to get 7,740 times 2 plus 9,800 parentheses 
let's see, 2 minus pi over 4. And from here, I'm going to get 23,175, give or take, newtons. If I convert this to kilonewtons, I'll get my Fz as 23.2 kilonewtons. Okay. So looking at over here, this was 30.2, this was 23.2. So note that they're not the same, right? If you use that 45 degree angle, so there's no relation like that for a circular, okay? So then at the end of the day, my FP is going to be this then. FP will be 30.2 30 kilonewton in the J direction minus 23.2 kilonewton in the K direction. So this is my final answer. So for a good measure, let's go ahead and find this angle right over here, the angle that it makes, okay? Um, the, so what I'm going to do is now it be, becomes tangent of this data will be, you can see Fy over Fz, right? And then if my Fy is, I calculated my questions 30.2 and the other one's 23.2, both are kina newton, so they will cancel each other. So then if I calculate this, you will see that this will be right around 52.5 degrees.